Good evening, good evening, good evening. We would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Global Apostolic Movement Virtual Church this Sunday at 7 p.m. We thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule just to come and fellowship with us. The Bible tells us that, oh, how great and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. We thank you all for tuning in tonight, whether on Facebook, whether Twitter, or whether on YouTube. We ask that you like and share this broadcast. And now I'm going to do the opening prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before the throne of grace, before the mercy seat. And Father God, I ask you as the word come forth on tonight from our very own Pastor Beverly Cole. Father God, we ask that you allow the word to confirm some things in some people's life, God. Father God, we ask that you allow the word, God, to answer some prayers that some have been praying, God. Father God, we ask that the word on tonight bring forth healing and deliverance, God. Father God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you allow your word to prick somebody's soul on tonight, God, where they will just turn their life over and just begin to serve and call on the name of Jesus. Father God, I ask you in the name of Jesus to look down on our ministers of music, God. Look down on the Stokes this evening, God. And Father God, I ask that you minister through their worship, minister through their vocal cords tonight, God. Father God, let the music, let the worship song touch somebody, God. Oh, Father God, we give you praise this evening. We give you honor and we give you glory, God. We thank you for our chief apostle, apostle LaShawn Reese, God. We ask that you bless everyone that's tuning in tonight, God. Father God, we ask that you bless the ones that are not yet tuned in, but are trying to tune into Zoom or Facebook, or Twitter, or, or on YouTube. Father God, we ask that you bless every household that is represented here tonight, God. Father God, we thank you on tonight, God. Father God, we thank you for how you brought us through the storm, God. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor, God, and we give you the word. Father God, we thank you on tonight, God, for all that you've done and all that you're getting ready to do. Father God, this right now is our opening prayer, and we ask that you allow Pastor Julie and Pastor Ellie Stoke to come forth in holy boldness on tonight, God, as they lead us into worship. And I now turn it over into the hands of Pastor Elliot and Pastor Julia Stokes. Be blessed. <laughs> We worship you, Papa. We bless you. We thank you. We honor you. Hallelujah. Your goodness is so wonderful. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful, yeah, yeah. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am faithful, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. Oh, I will sing 
of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. You've been so faithful, God. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Of God, your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. When my life lay now, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Everybody sing. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. His goodness is running after, is running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Come on and lift your hands before the Lord. Oh, his goodness is coming down. Oh, can't you feel the goodness of the Lord? It's like showers upon your face. The goodness of the Lord is showering on you. No matter where you are, God's goodness is showering on you. No matter where you are, God's goodness is falling on your face. No matter where you are, your goodness is running after me. Come on and say, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Thank you for your goodness. It's running after. It's running after me. When my life lay now, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. In all my life, you have been faithful. Oh, yes, Lord. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am faithful, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, I will see. Of the goodness of God, of God. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the glory. Thank you for everything God you've done for me. I'm so grateful you changed my story. You changed my life. 
you changed my story and ha 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 Aren't you glad God changed your story? Aren't you glad God changed? He changed your life. Glory bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my life. Oh, my life. You've been faithful. And all my life. So, so good with every breath that I am grateful. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Did he change your story? Did he change your life? Hallelujah. You are alive now. You're no longer dead. Hallelujah. But you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Just for a quick moment, let's sing about it. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him on Calvary, but he rose in victory. He is alive, he is alive. He's alive with no power in his hand. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. no power in his hand. The lamb that was slain, he's alive, forever he shall reign. He's alive. They crucified him on Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With no power in his hand. Jesus is. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hand, when he rose in glory, with all power and authority, he conquered my enemy. He put him under my feet, he rose in glory, with all power and authority, he conquered my enemy, and he put them Oh, he rose, 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 and he put him under. One more time, he rose, he rose, he rose, he rose, he rose, he rose, and he put him Come on and praise them, hallelujah. If you know that the Lord, hallelujah, rose with all power in his hands, now you can rise, you can be victorious, you can be all that God wants you to be because you are resurrected spirit, because he rose, you can rise above all circumstances. And he's alive. He's alive. He's alive with all power in his hand. Jesus is. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive with all power in his hand. He's alive. 
Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, heroes. In glory. With all power. With and all authority. Power. For heroes. Yes. In glory. With all power. And authority. Yes. He conquered my enemy. Yes. And he put them under. Oh, heroes. Yes. In glory. With all power. And authority. Hallelujah. He conquered my yes, he did. And he put them on the mouth. He's alive. Yes, He's Lord. Alive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He is alive. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. We praise your name. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He is alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. And he has all power and authority. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Want to thank you, Pastor Stokes. Amen. For wait for just ushering us into the presence of God. It's just something about praising his name. Amen. And I just was impressed upon my heart earlier this week with the scripture reading out of Psalms 118. And it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Somebody just needs to take the time right now and say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I give, make it personal, make it personal. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good. No matter what we've been through, no matter what we're going through, no matter what he's brought us out of, no matter what we're facing or what we're looking at, no matter what, he is still good. And his mercy, hallelujah, endures forever. Y'all just need to lock that down in your spirit because there's gonna come a time that no matter what, you're gonna have to just begin to open up your mouth. There's something about praising the Lord, amen? In the midst of adversity, it's something about praising the Lord. When the enemy is surrounding you on every side, it's something about praising the Lord because he is good and his mercy endures forever. Again, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Hallelujah. I am Pastor Beverly Cole, and I'm the presiding pastor, amen, over Game Virtual Church. And I want to acknowledge our chief apostle, amen, LaSh LaShawn Reese, the founder of Global Apostolic Movement. And I also want to publicly acknowledge and thank Elder Elijah Small for filling in for me last week. And I know the word was powerful. We know because he is just filled with the word. He speaks the word oozes out. So again, I want to thank the team, my team, the one that God has called me to serve with. Amen. They do such a phenomenal job. It's not because of me, but it's because of their love for the Lord Jesus Christ and their commitment. Amen. For making him happy their commitment to advancing the kingdom. Amen. And I want to go ahead and get right into the word. I just bless the Lord. And I'm going to keep reminding you of Psalms 118 because a part of the scripture and what I'm going to be teaching on tonight is coming out of that as well as 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 8 and 9. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up, hallelujah, with the scripture coming out of Psalms 118, and I'm going to start reading at verse 5, and I'm going to read it out of the contemporary English version, and it says, when I was really hurting, I prayed to the Lord. He answered my prayer and took my worries away. Another version is the good news translation. It says, he answered me and set me free. Another one says that he answered me and rescued me. What are you saying? I'm saying that no matter where you are, when you cry out, some said that I called on the name of the Lord. I cried out to him and he put my feet in a broad place. He rescued me. He said, me for he said when we begin to cry out to the Lord most high that no matter what we're going through just call on his name he wants to answer the word of God says many are the affliction of the righteous but the Lord shall deliver us from them all and my text today if I have to give one I put on Facebook and it says you knocked me down but you did knock me out somebody needs to say that right now you knocked me down but you didn't knock me out. 
And I'm going to bring that out of uh, Psalms 118. And we're going to stay there for a minute. And verse 13 says, you did your best to kill me. Oh, my enemy. But the Lord helped me. Verse 14 says, he is my strength and song in the heat of battle. And now he has given me the victory. You need to get that in your spirit. And another version says, hallelujah. And it says, mm, you pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. See, the enemy, when we're talking about being knocked down, but not knocked out, there's a difference because the word of God in Proverbs says that when the righteous fall, he can fall seven times. And every time he falls, he's going to do what? Get up. Every time he falls, he's going to get up. And so I know so many of us have been going through. And I know for me last week and the week before, I had to press my way. And the Lord reminded me that when the enemy came in, he knocked me back. Yes, and I failed, but guess what? Because the Lord is my help. Guess what? When I cried out to the Lord, guess what? It says that he strengthened me. He helped me. He dealt with my worries. He dealt with my concern. And he called me to rise up. Some of you right now have fallen. But I don't want you to twist it just because you fail. And I'm going to use this boxing terms terminology because that's what the Lord told me. He said he knocked you down, but he did knock you out. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move over to 2 Corinthians. Amen. And I'm going to be reading verses 8 and 9 out of the English Standard Version. And it reads, verse 8 says, we were afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down. Here we go, being struck down, fallen, hit, and it caused you to hit the ground. You were struck down, but not destroyed. The Lord sent me today just to tell you, for the ones that have fallen, it's time to get up. For the ones who have been knocked down, who have been perplexed on every side. As I begin to do this study and I begin to do a little research, I started to look at these boxing terminology, if you will. And when I came to this particular passage of scripture, it says that here, it says that we were a Afflicted on every side. When I think about being afflicted, or maybe even in a boxing ring, you know that you have the two boxers squaring up with one another. And I want to tell you one thing about your opponent. First of all, he doesn't play, play fair. He doesn't box the way he's supposed to. There are times he's going to sucker punch you. There are times he's going to use combinations. There are times he's going to give you an uppercut. There are times he's going to blindside you. There are times when he's going to just give you quick jabs. And it's those quick jabs that have a tendency to cause you to become weary. It's those quick jabs that just keep coming. See, we're still talking about being hard pressed on every side. When I think about being hard pressed on every side, I look at that boxer in the ring. In the other translation, it says that it was trouble. You are being troubled on every side. It could be your marriage. It could be your finances. It could be your business. It could be your job whatever it is, this could be the economy. It could be sickness. It can be disease. You may have been dealing with the death. Some have de dealt with mm, Hurricane mm, Ian and all of these other distractions that are coming and obstacles that have been placed before us. See, it's just like being in the ring and there's a series of combinations that are coming at you. When I'm talking about the combinations, I'm talking about a right, right cross. I'm talking maybe about an uppercut. Maybe I'm talking about just a slight jabs that the enemy has a tendency to do. But whatever it is, and everything is throwing at you, the word of God says that you may be in trouble. Hallelujah. But you will not, we will not stay down. We may have to go through some things because we understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us from them all. I understand that though you've been standing there and you've been taking punch after punch and it got to the point where you kind of lost your footing and you may have slipped down, but I'm here to tell you, he knocked you down, but you didn't get knocked out. So even with the jazz, the word of God says that you have been, mm -hmm, afflicted, you've been in trouble, you're being troubled on every side, and that no matter 
matter what, because you've been troubled on every side, who oh God, but you were not crushed. In other words, the enemy can only go so far. He can only touch certain things. The same way that he was with Job is the same way that God has given him a little leeway with you. Remember when Jesus told Peter that Satan sift, desired to sift him as wheat, but notice what Jesus said. He didn't pray that Satan wouldn't do it. He didn't pray that he wasn't going to have to go through the test. He didn't pray or command the enemy to stop. In other words, what did Jesus say? He said, I prayed and I am praying that when you come out of this, that your faith will not fail you. In other words, while you're down on that mat, while you're dealing with with all of those punches, while you're dealing with that combination, while you're dealing with the enemy, while you're dealing with the sickness, I came to tell you, you may have been knocked down, but you're not out. You may have been troubled, but you're not crushed. The enemy, we understand that he is the thief. He comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came to tell you, I sent by the Holy Ghost, See, he is the referee of this whole match. He's not going to allow the enemy to take you out. He's only going to allow him to go so far. So I'm here to tell you, you've been knocked down, but you're not knocked out. So it's time just to get up. And there are times, and it goes on to say, mm, in 2 Corinthians verse 4, and I'm still in 8, it says that you have been perplexed, but not driven to despair. In other words, when I think and I look up that word perplexed, it means, hallelujah, not to be, mm, to have no way out to be at a loss. It's almost like a mental fog or a mental confusion. You can't see your way. You don't know what's going on. It's almost as though you find yourself in the valley of decisions. You want to do this and you want to do that, but you can't seem to get your wits about you. Because see, even with that, it talked about uh, mm, that sucker punch is what I'm talking about. It's that punch when the enemy begins to throw and he begins to jab and he just keeps coming and it's taking you by surprise. See, you didn't see that coming. You didn't see that sickness coming. As a matter of fact, some of you have gone through. The enemy thought he'd be answer, but he sucker punched you. You went for your checkup just to find out that it was someplace else. You went and the enemy gave you a negative report. So it sucker punched you. You thought the marriage was going well. He came in or she came in and said that I'm leaving. And all of of a sudden divorces in house all of a sudden there's contention all of a sudden you're dealing with your child see that's the trouble being on every side but see that was a sucker punch because you wasn't expecting that you kind of turned your head for a little bit because you found yourself getting weary you found yourself perplexed because you don't know what to do all of these things are happening and so even with that when the the enemy, he took you and he caused you to fall and you fell to the ground because you didn't see it coming. But I came to tell you, you fell, but you wasn't counted out. As a matter of fact, they call it an eight count. And it's when the referee begins to count to eight. See, just because you fell or maybe even lost your footing, the referee is stopping. The Holy Ghost is stopping right now. And he's counting to eight. And remember, eight represents new beginnings. Eight represents a new start. So the Lord is saying, why you catch your breath? I'm giving you an eight count. He's not going to take you out. It's not going to crush you. It's not going to cause you to go into despair. I'm going to give you enough time to catch your breath. I know you didn't see it coming. I know you were blindsided. I know. Oh, be to play fair. I know you're hurting. I know you've been abused. I know it just seems like if it's not one thing, it's another. And he catches you off guard. And as a matter of fact, you're so perplexed. You're trying to figure out, God, where do I go next? Who do I call? They're about to foreclose on the house. Who do I call? God, they're about to repossess the car. Who do I call, Lord? They gave me a pink slip on my job. I don't know what to do. But it comes in and says, the Lord is giving you an eight count. The Holy Ghost it's giving you an opportunity to breathe again. Remember when mm, the psalmist said that when I cried out mm, and I called on the Lord and he set me free. 
He rescued me. He allowed me not to worry anymore. He took away all of my worries. He took away all of my concerns. See, in this season, people of God, you're going to have to know that you know that you know that if God be for you, who can be against you, you're going to have to know. There are times you're going to fall, but guess what? I came to tell you, my assignment is to let you know you were knocked down, but you didn't get knocked out. So it's time to rise up. Mm. In the name of Jesus, and it talked about the persecution. <laughs> you were persecuted. See, you didn't see it coming from the one you worked with. You didn't see it coming from the one that you served with. You didn't see it coming from the one that you've been friends for such a long time. You didn't see it coming from your boss. You didn't see it coming from them. Because say, every time they turn around or they had a need, they may not hold on God first, but they were always able to call on you. There have been times you walked the floor. And this is the same one that if it had been your Judas, they kissed you and you didn't understand what was going on. It was that same one who talked about you, who talked about your marriage, who talked about your character. As a matter of fact, they tried to, to abuse and to scandalize your name. But I'm here to tell you that even in the midst of the persecution, hallelujah, when you go through the persecution, mm, the Lord is saying that I have not forsaken you. I haven't left you. As a matter of fact, I'm walking with you. See, that's one of the little jabs that keep coming. You thought it was just going to be with the one on your job. But when you got home, the jab just kept coming. You thought it was going to just be with them. But when you went to the store, the jab just kept coming. So you have been persecuted. They don't know who you are. They don't know because somebody has gone around and they're scandalizing your name. They're talking about you. As a matter of fact, they got it listed on Facebook. How mm, how unreliable you are, how God didn't call you. They're even beginning to talk about your anointing. So there's one thing. The word of God, as a matter of fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. He's giving me a warning to you. The word of God said that touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. See, there are times when you just can't talk about the people of God. You just can't say anything about your pastor, about your apostle, about the prophet, about your teacher, about your parents, about those that you were called to honor. See, you can't even just talk about a certain way, even to God. God is saying, even in the book of Malachi, he said, where is my honor? You remember when Miriam and Aaron, they began to talk against Moses. See, it's something about putting your mouth on the one that God God sent. It's something about putting your mouth on the one who stayed up, who's prayed, who God has called to watch over your soul. It's something about putting your mouth on them. But the Lord said to bless those that persecute you. Bless and pray for those who spitefully misuse you. See, our kingdom, the kingdom culture is a little bit different. You don't begin to talk. You don't go to the trunk. You don't vent your anger. As a matter of fact, the word God said that David cried out, Lord, who delivered me from my distresses? He said that you may have been persecuted, but so was my son. He said in order to reign with him, you got to suffer them. So can you be mm, handle being knocked out? Hey, can you handle, I'm sorry, being knocked down? Because the word says that you weren't knocked out. It's time to get up. It's time to put on your strength. It's time to get up, people of God. You've been down long enough. You've got more strength than you knew you had. Mm. God has strengthened you. He says that when he cried out, he brought him to a place. It says that when he cried out, mm, he saved him. He rescued him. It says that when he cried out, See, when the enemy comes in and it said that he pushed me violently that I might die. See, we understand according to John 10, 10 that the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So I'm here to tell you, based on the word of God, it's time to rise up. On the word of God, he says, put on your strength. It's time for you to get up. You've been down long enough. You've been dealing with this thing long enough. I have not left you, nor have I forsaken you. You have to remember. It's something. Remember, I talked about 
praise. It's not about praising the Lord in the midst of your situation. If you don't believe me, just go back and begin to look in 2 Chronicles 20 when he was talking about Jehoshaphat. See, the same way in the Psalms 118, it said that when the enemy surrounded him, they surrounded him like bees. Every time he turned around, a sucker punch. Every time he turned around, a right cross. Every time he turned around, they called and he even gave him a blow. It was illegal because they caught him at the back of his head and it caused him to fall. But the word of God says that he told Jehoshaphat, don't worry. In other words, the Lord said, don't worry because this battle don't belong to you, it's mine. I need for you to get in the right posture. I need for you to get in the right stance. I need for you to understand that when you send Judah first, you do know that Judah means praise. When you release your praise, it says that as they begin to praise him, all of a sudden the Lord sent an ambush against his enemies. So I'm here to tell you, you were knocked down, but you're not knocked out. Mm. And it goes on to say, it says that they struck in other words, one says that they cast down. He said, you were struck down, but you were not destroyed. I came to tell you, there's a count going on in the ring. There's a counting going on in the ring. And I see some of you on the canvas, but you're saying, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. No, I don't, but he does. You said, I don't know how to get up. You may not, but he knows how to get you up. You might be saying, but the last time I got up, or when this happened, I thought I was done with this. Just to turn around and to see it approaching me again. I didn't think I was going to see this enemy no more ever, because that's what it talked about when they said, in the exodus when the lord told mm, moses now this enemy you won't see no more ever see some of you are thinking that because you made it through the first time because he didn't take you out the first time that the enemy does not have right that the enemy shouldn't be coming to your house but guess what the same thing that jesus went through you're gonna have to go through the same temptations that you had to go he went through you're gonna have to go through see we want to reign but we don't want to suffer we want to reign, but we don't don't want to take it here. We want to reign. We want the anointing. We want to speak to the masses. We, we want to do all these things, but we don't want to process. We don't want to be equipped. We don't want to have to learn how to spar in the ring like a true soldier. The word of God says that we need to learn how to endure as a good soldier. Because see, although you've been knocked down, you haven't been knocked out. Because the word of God says the all give thanks. Somebody right there needs to give thanks because the enemy thought he had you. You need to give thanks because he thought you were dead, but you need to give thanks. See, he didn't see any movement as the referee is walking around the room. Mm -hmm. He's walking around the mat. Now that you ring, he's walking around and he's all but counted you out. Some of you are about at eight. I hear the spirit of the living God said some are about at nine. But I came by to let you know, according to Ezekiel 2, 1 and 2, I'm going to read this in your hearing and this is what the Lord is saying to you. Hallelujah. Mm. Ezekiel 2, and you need to understand that the Ezekiel, his name means God is whew, my strength. God makes strong, or God is strong. In other words, for you that are about, I see the, mm, the referee, his arm is up. He's getting ready to go down for that last count. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say, according to Ezekiel, see, I've been sent as a messenger of the most high Ezekiel 2 and 1 says he said to me son of man I'm here to tell some of you son of man a woman or man stand up on your feet and I will speak to you the word of God is saying to you today for those that have been knocked down but you're not knocked out he says to stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. See, he'd been so worn down. He had been so tired. He didn't know what else to do. So when he fell out, the word of God, the Lord sent a word to him. He said, son of man, stand on your feet. And verse two says that as he spoke, as he spoke, as she's speaking, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speak speaking to me. 
I heard him speaking to me. See, the spirit of the Lord right now is causing some of you to rise up on your feet. Because see, although he thought he counted you out, see, when we're talking about a knockout, see what I mean when I say knockout, when they knock you down and they get you to 10, the knockout means that by the time the referee is done counting, you have not come back to consciousness. You're no longer able to stand in the fight. You laid there. There is no movement. There is no worship. There is no prayer. There is no hope. Some of you have become hopeless, but the Lord told me to tell you, son of man, get up on your feet. He's coming to revive you. He's coming to revive you. It's time for you to get up. As he's speaking to you, he's allowing your man to rise up. Deep call unto deep. Spirit call unto spirit. Spirit of the living God arise. It says let God arise. Every enemy be scattered. As he's calling you to get up on your feet. As he's helping some of you up. You didn't lose. So I silence every lion wonder. I silence everyone that was even sitting back in the arena. See they had even counted you out. As a matter of fact, they had gone over to the bookie. Because see one of your friends didn't think you were going to get up from this. As a matter of fact, some of the ones that you prayed with, some of the ones that are your relatives, if you were going to come back, see, they saw you lying on the mat, and the only thing they did was step over. Maybe they didn't pray. Maybe they didn't know what to pray, but I'm here to tell you, the word of God says, man of God, son of God, son of man, get up and stand on your feet. And as the spirit begins to move in you, it's calling you to rise up. You may not jump up, I don't know. You may have to do it one at a time. You know how it is when you fall in and you put your hands in front of you. But as you're rising up, I want you to say, oh, give thanks to the Lord. As you're rising up, I want you to come up with a new song in your head, in your heart. See, the enemy thought you were defeated, but the Lord said, not so. Woman of God, man of God, get up on your feet and at your prayer. Your way up. But some of you who may not be able to get up just right now, I want you to just wave your hand. It's a sign of victory. I want you to raise your hand. You may not be able to say anything because see, even when the enemy took that low blow, he took a low hit at you and he hit you below the belt. Some of you may not be able to speak because you're winded, but I'm here to tell you if you can just raise your hand, if you can just look up and begin to worship the same God that brought Jehoshaphat out the same God that will bring you into a wide place, the same God that is willing to rescue you, the same God that didn't forsake you or leave you, the same God that moved the mountain, the same God that brought water from a rock, the same God that caused the Red Sea to open up, the same God that spoke and all things came into creation, the same God that is able to move mountains, the same God. Mm that brought you out before it's the same God that's bringing you out now. So I'm here to decree to you today. I'm here to decree and to declare to you, you're not knocked out, time to get up. Whew. You said that, Pastor, you don't know it's not that easy. Ain't nothing easy. See, the kingdom, mm, help me, Holy Ghost, salvation is free, but the kingdom will cost you everything. What are you willing to give, give up in order to get up? <laughs> it just requires a praise. It just requires your prayers. It just requires... You and I, Lord, that seemed like a simple thing to do. But even if you're thinking about it wrestling, you know, but see, there's a partnership when it comes to the wrestling, when they have two in the ring. And all of a sudden, the one that's about to be pinned, he may not be able to speak, but he raises his hand. The word of God... It's saying, I came to tell some of you who may not be able to get up, if you would just raise up your hand, the Lord will hit your hand. In other words, he's tagging you out so he can come in. Somebody needs to tag the Lord today because he said this battle don't belong to you. All I need for you to do is to get up, get in the right posture, begin to worship, begin to praise, begin to allow your spirit man to be mm, rejuvenated refreshed, renewed, begin to worship me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. See, the word of God says in James to count it all joy 
Who God? David said, it was good that I was afflicted. Now I know your precepts and your principles. See, Job even went through. Job told him, see, I knew you were my hearing, but because I had to go through, because you never left me nor forsook me, because you stood with me when everybody else was ready to throw in the towel. They keep looking at me. They kept talking about me. They kept trying to figure out what I had done in order to find myself in a place like this. I just came to tell somebody else today. God's got you on display. The enemy only goes so far because the Lord knows it's more in you and he's trying to bring it out. So I came just today just to tell you, you've been knocked down, but you're not knocked out. I came by just to tell you, it's time to get up. Move, put on your stress. It's time for some of you to get up and begin to shake the dust off, your, off yourself. Shake the ashes. Some of you have been laying in grave clothes. As a matter of fact, you've clothed yourself in sackcloth and ashes. The Lord said for some of you, it's time to change your garment. Pull off the grave clothes. It's time to get up. The enemy can't win because I've already defeated the enemy. The enemy can't win because, see, he knew that you and I have relationship. The enemy can't win. I'm only here. I'm trying to strengthen you Woo, for the battle that is yet to come. You've already won because I've already defeated the enemy. Time to get up. Man of God, it's time to get up. Woman of God, it's time to get up. And I'm not just telling you guys, I had to tell myself that. See, David said, you have to learn how to encourage yourself. I had to get this scripture that day. I had to have the Lord tell me that when I cried out, he was going to rescue me. He was going to bring me into a broad place. See, I was becoming perplexed on every side because there were some things that I was believing for. There were some things that kept coming at me. But the Lord said, whoo. You were knocked down, but you didn't get knocked out. Get up, get up. I've already, found, all I need for you to do is to learn how to give me thanks in all things. Thanks. And when you begin to worship, watch the ambush go for. Watch him release the ambush because I'm talking about his angels. The enemy will turn on themselves. The Lord is just saying, allow me to refresh you. Allow me to pour some fresh oil over you today. Allow me to just mend the brokenness in your heart. Allow me to deal with the scars and the wounds. Allow me, he said, because I'm gonna bind up the broken heart and I'm gonna heal their wounds. The Lord is wanting to heal you. The Lord is wanna speak to you. The Lord is wanting to, to show you who he really is. See, we talk about him, but is he still a provider when you lose your job? We talk about him being Jehovah Ropa. Is he still a healer when you get a negative report? We're talking about Jehovah Shalom, my peace. Is he really the peacemaker or the peace when the storms of life are raging? See, when we begin to decree a thing, the spirit of the Lord is going to show up. The Lord is going to put it to the test, but he's not going to allow you to be knocked out. So he says, for those who can't speak, just raise your hand. He said, can you tag me in now? Can you give it to me now? You've worked as much as you could. You've done everything you can do. All I need for you to do right now, as he told you, just go stand. Posture yourself in a place where you can see me. Posture yourself. Who position? Posture. Begin to worship. Begin to praise. And watch me bring deliverance to you. Watch me defeat your enemy. Because see, it's all about me and my goodness. But this was just sent to fortify you. This was just sent to work your faith muscles. This was just sent to let you know hmm, that God is for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? And it goes on to say here that the Lord was his strength hmm, and he strengthened him. And now he has become his song. See the Lord you to praise him even in the middle of what you're going through people of god you may have been knocked down but you have not been knocked out it's time to get up the world is looking for us it's time to get up we need to mm. god has us on display in this season he's calling us to be the light he's calling us to be the salt of the earth 
The word of God says that if the righteous are scarcely saved, they're looking at you. They're going to the world for answers, but they don't have it. But in this season, God said, it's time to get up. The enemy has already been defeated. I'm just trying to strengthen you because I need you. As a matter of fact, I just remember a passage of scripture as I was reading. When David told Solomon, he began to tell Solomon, I'm going to read it to you as I'm closing and it's first uh, corinthians 28 and 20 and it says then david said to solomon his son be strong and courageous and do it whatever god is telling you to do just do it. do not be afraid and do not be dismayed for the lord even my god is with you he will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of his house, of the service of the house of the Lord is finished. In other words, you've got work to do. You can't do it if you're knocked out. You can't do it if you won't get up. This is the season where the Lord is saying, be strong and courageous. I'm not going to leave you. As a matter of fact, the same one that took a bet that you weren't going to get up. They didn't realize they lost the bet. Because, see, they thought they were bet betting against you. They thought that the lots were cast against you, that you weren't going to make it, that you weren't going to get up. But the Lord said they lost. Because look now. You're going to go on your job. They're going to say, well, I, I thought he walked out, but she's still smiling. She still has joy. She's still encouraging somebody else. He He's still talking about the goodness of the Lord. And I, I know he just lost his wife. I know they just lost the house. I know they had to deal with the tropical storms and hurricanes, but how is it that they can still speak of the goodness of the Lord? Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. See, they lost the bet, but God has already sealed the promise and the victory. It's a fixed fight. You win. So don't be moved by getting knocked down. What I will tell you, it's time to get up. It's time to get up and allow him to strengthen you as he speaks to you. And for those who don't know the Lord and the, and the pardon of their sins. See, you can only claim this when you have relationship. And the Lord is wanting all of his children to come home. He's been waiting on you. You've been going back and forth with this thing. And every Sunday you come or even as you hear them on a, maybe throughout the week and they've opened the doors of the church there and giving you an invitation to know him. Don't take it for granted that you're going to get up in the morning. Don't take it for granted that the next hour is promised. You say, well, pastor, don't scare me. No, I'm just speaking truth. If you hear him calling, don't harden your heart. But begin to confess. And it's just this simple, Father, if you'll repeat after me, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. I confess and I acknowledge my sin. Jesus, come into my heart. I give you full control. And if you said it's just that simple, with confession and belief in the heart, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God, it's just that simple. Welcome to the kingdom. And you're now a kingdom citizen. You've been knocked down. It's time to get up and allow him to put you on display. You win. As a matter of fact, I see some of you, you know how they win and they bring these big belts. I see the belts, mm. your trophy that God is presenting to you now. He called you a world champ. You won that fight. And not because of anything that we've done, but because of who he is. So I say to you, you've been knocked down, but it's time to get up. It's time to get up and allow him to cause you to be free and to move you into a spacious place. He wants to get the glory. All you have to do is give it to him. Trust. Trust. Amen. Trust and believe. Somebody may need to rededicate. Trust and believe. It's not his desire that any should perish. Trust and believe. Amen. So you've been knocked down, but I'm here to tell you, get up. Amen.
I turn it over for the announcements. And I pray this word just really blessed you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you would like to sow into this movement and www.gammovement.org to see the ways that you can give. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Having a little difficulties, but God is still in control. Hallelujah, we just bless him, we bless him, we bless him. Hallelujah, we're gonna keep praising until it changes. We're gonna keep praising because our God is good. And he is worthy. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Turn it back over to IT for the announcement. If you would like to sow into this movement and financially support the initiatives we're doing at Global Apostolic Movement, we have six ways for you to do so. You can visit our website, www.gammovement.org to see the ways that you can give. We are on Cash App at dollar sign GAM Movement, PayPal and Zelle at our email address, gammovement21 at gmail.com. And if you're familiar with the Givelify app, we are there as well under Global Apostolic Movement. Feel free to mail in a check or money order to our P.O. Box 552-696, Miami Gardens, Florida 33055. You can join us every weekday at Warriors on the Wall for intercession and breakthrough. You can join by calling 319-527-2964. If you have Metro PCS or T-Mobile, first dial the backup number before dialing the 319 number. We're on the line Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon, and Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 5 a.m. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., our chief apostle does her inspirational moments, which is a time of refreshing encouragement and motivation to push you through the rest of your week. You can tune in by joining Apostle LaShawn Reese's Facebook page, as well as Global Apostolic Movement's Facebook or YouTube page. For His Glory, Prophetic Release happens every Saturday at 7 p.m. You can tune in by joining Prophetess Tracy Magwood's personal Facebook page or the recurring Zoom meeting ID below. It's different speakers every time, but it is always a powerful time. You would love to be there every Saturday at 7 p.m. And then if you would like to take your ministry to the next level, you can do so by visiting our website, www.gammovement.org. That's 1M to see how to apply and join your organization under the leadership and covering of our organization, Global Apostolic Movement, led by Chief Apostle Reese. And finally, you can meet us back here next Sunday and every Sunday at 7 p.m. However you're tuning in now is the way to join next week. We're on Zoom meeting, the same Zoom meeting ID every week, and Facebook Live at Global Apostolic Movement. And now, for our benediction. My God, my God, my God. The word of God was awesome on tonight. I feel like Pastor Cole was Paul talking to King Agrippa. King Agrippa said, thou almost persuaded me. And I'm going to tell you tonight, saints of God, if that word of God didn't touch you, if it didn't revive you, if it didn't rejuvenate you, our pastor has definitely been in the ring. She began to tell us about them sucker punches and the uppercuts, and she began to tell us about the eight count. I pray, I pray, I pray on tonight that you receive the word of God, which came forth in holy boldness. I mean, she just jaywalked through the word of God on tonight, and the word of God was just awesome, 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 awesome. We give God the glory for his goodness and do forever she began to jaywalk through the word giving us psalms 118 and 5 second corinthians 4 8 through 9 ezekiel 2 1 and 2 first corinthians 28 
and 20. Andre Day sings a song, said, I'll rise again. I'll rise up. But the William brother said that I'm still here. And now for the benediction, let this word of God just carry you through the week, saints of God, because the word of God was on tonight was powerful. It was awesome. Job well done to our very own Pastor Beverly Cole. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glories with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. You are dismissed. Be blessed.